Hi, I'm Paul Marcel. Today we're going to talk about the bandsaw jig I used in order to cut the planes on this tapered octagon. All right, well, we ended up cutting it a lot during that episode. So in this project, I tried a different way of doing some cuts. This was the first time I ever tried what I've been kind of colloquially calling spatial cuts. So what this is, is I completely built this tapered octagon, and then I mounted it onto a jig, and then I cut the tapered octagon on the hole using the bandsaw in order to lop off different planes, such as lopping off the back to make a flat for it to go up to the wall, and then of course the cuts that separate the bottom from the top part of it, and then of course leveling off the top all completely. Now it seems like a lot of steps for putting it together, it actually goes really fast. Now the jig itself is really easy, there's just a piece of MDF as a floor, another piece that's up vertical over by the blade, so this is going to act as your 90 degree reference, and then a piece in the back to help keep everything kind of square. Now I did happen to use sort of some uh, squaring blocks, some blocks to just make it a little bit easier to put together and give it a little bit more strength, but these are all things that you find in your scrap bin. Now at the time when I did all the cuts on this, I did record a segment, so you know we have the octagon all mounted on it, and I'm talking about how the parts go together. So we're going to go revisit that in just a moment. But one thing I didn't talk about was how I drilled some holes in the side of that jig and what was that for? Now the jig is in pieces right now, but I do have one key part here that I can use to explain what the holes were for. Now if we go back to the triangles, imagine this is the center triangle, the one that's actually on the back side here. When I created these triangles, I drew a center line on them, and then when we were doing the mortising straight through the triangles into the top of the leg, one of the things I did is I attached a screw to the back side of it that goes straight through the center line of this. So this was a way of doing, you know, clamping in the future, but also holding it down while I did the mortising. But it also held a very special role, especially for the center triangle, in doing this cut. So what I did is when I built this jig, I marked a line a certain distance up from the bottom. Now, no special distance, it's just that it's parallel to the bottom. And then I drilled a hole here right on the center line, that's for our number six screw. Then I drilled a half inch hole over here on the center line, and then there was another one over here that got cut off as we were doing some of the builds for the other jigs. But there were two of them. Now what I did is then I mounted the octagon that was assembled, and of course I only have one piece here to show, on the inside of the jig. So when I put this thing here and I screw it in, it would be attached like this to the back. But of course, with that one screw in it through from the one side, it's able to pivot. Now, what I did is because there was a center line drawn on the front facet of the octagon, and there's a center line that I drew here, right? A line that I drew off the bottom that's parallel, but then I drew, a, I put a screw right through the center line, I'm able to rotate this octagon back here. And what I can do is I can look through uh, the two half inch holes, another one being here, and I can sight for the center line that's on the triangle, and I can make it parallel to the line that's here. Now, you know, ideally with the screw going through the center line and being tapped in the center line here, the line should exactly line up. That's not the case. It was, the line was just a little bit below the center line here, but it was trivial with the two sight holes to make it that that was level and parallel to the line here, which meant that the center line on this triangle was parallel to the deck of the saw. That's really going to be important for the cut that's on the top here, because this cut is going to be, you know, 90 degrees to the bottom. So if you know this is all parallel, that means it's going to be a nice 90 degree cut off the top of it. So let's go take a look at the video that I recorded explaining how this was going to go and showing you the cuts, you know, as they're going. And then I'm going to show you the actual cuts, the same things that you saw in the no comment build. But I'm going to slow it down with some little captions so that you can better see where the steps are, and it should become very, very clear how this works. And really easy, great technique. Okay, roll it. So I want to explain some things that are going on with this sled before I go cutting it all up. I've got four cuts that are going to be made using this sled, and you know, there, it's obviously not a very usual way of making cuts with a bandsaw. So first, what the sled itself is trying to accomplish is it's trying to hold this uh, tapered octagon in a spatial orientation that makes it that I can make cuts uh, for the planes that I'm trying to cut. Now you saw me use that plumb laser and I marked a line here. You know, in fact, from your perspective there, it's right here. That would be slicing. So I made that mark there of where the plumb line laser is and that's gonna represent the back of the unit. So the center 
facet is the one that's kind of the key. And that's this one right here that was anchored against this vertical fence back here. Now this piece back here, its whole role is just to make sure that this thing stays at 90 degrees. Now the reason it's key that this be 90 degrees, I mean we always deal with 90 degrees, so you think, well that's natural. But there's actually a really good reason for doing that, is I have only one line marked here, and this is at 90 degrees. So now when I go to make this cut through there, the plane that I'm creating on this flat surface that's been cut is going to be, it, you know, as I said, the top projection of it is going to be parallel to this centered face because it is on the 90 degree to the blade. Now to help support it, I tuck some shims underneath here so they'll press on the parts that are down here that have some clearance so that when the blade comes down and it wants to kind of torque this thing, uh, this is going to help hold it there uh, as well as I'm going to be going kind of slow with it. But I don't want it to, uh, if, if it does too much motion like that, it's going to be generating its own chatter. Now the cuts that I'll be making with this is the first one is going to be to make this cut that's going to be to clip off part of the back of it so that when it goes up against the wall, this is going to be the flat against the wall. Now, as you saw in the video, what my, my plan is, is after I do that, I'll take another piece of scrap of this MDF, you know, something like this, and I'll be placing it up against the flat part that got cut. And then I'll run some screws through this MDF into the cut surface here, because that's going to get covered up when we're all done building this thing. But that way there, it's going to be anchored it's going to have screws in there. It's going to be held down onto the table. This whole thing is going to be really secure. And once it's like that, then I can make the other cuts. Now the other cuts, I'll put this sled this way here so that you can see it more clearly, is you know, we've got this kind of, you know, the top is all just ragged. It's just the way it came out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the saw and I'm going to be cutting a plane across the top so that I can level all of those. So there's a couple benefits to that. I could have cut those when I cut these facets, right? I could figure out, well, here's the inclination of the faceted sides. So what's the bevel cut to make it level on the top? So that's a lot of cuts to make on all these individual boards to make them the right height. So this is a whole lot easier is that I can kind of hold it spatially and just push it through the blade to get the right cut. So once I make that one cut along the top to just clip it off so that everything, so that none of this sort of side facet, none of that, all of that's been removed, well then afterwards, we'll be figuring out where the cuts go on here to remove the part that's where the tabletop is going to go. Now because these are on inclines like this and we're planning on putting dominoes through it, you actually have to get that thickness correct, the part that you're removing. Uh, if this was, say, an octagon cylinder, you could just cut it in half and put the two halves on either side of the table and be done with it. But because of the taper, uh, for one thing, you want that part removed properly so that the tapered sides as you look head on into the table are gonna they're, they're gonna flow right there's not gonna be a step where it comes down and suddenly it goes down an inch before it continues it's gonna flow but second of all with the domino holes I already put in here those are gonna need to have the right amount removed so that those holes remain uh, linear <laughs> that there's no discrepancy there's no step in there and we can handle a little tiny bit of step that's not a big deal but you know you want to get it kind of close so those cuts will be done after I sand the tabletop. I need that to be pretty much done, uh, the two flat parts, so that I can get the correct thickness and use the like the KM1 to just dial this in perfectly. So those are the four cuts that I'll be making with this in this kind of goofy sled that we put together here. The first cut that I'm going to be making, the one that's on the back, the way that I'm going to be doing that cut, and a lot of these techniques are just going to be reused for the other cuts, so I'll explain this one first, is I have this line drawn already. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a v-groove out here. Nowhere touching this, but just as close as I can to get to the octagon. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me a way of getting the blade really close to where I need it for the start of the cut. So once I have that, I'll be able to place this right up against the blade where I think I'm going to need to start the cut. But I'm actually going to do it off the line, just a little bit off the line. I'm going to freehand push the cut through. And then it's just like you're trying to set a drift. In a way, it's like you're trying to figure out the drift angle of your blade. We're not adjusting the drift, but this is how it's like you're doing it. You're going to freehand cut a straight line. Once you have that line tracking straight and parallel to the one that I marked, I'm going to stop the saw. So looking at this, it'll probably be eh, kind of like this type of an angle. Once I stop the saw because I have it in the correct angle and it's, it's tracking correctly against that line, I'll take this other piece of MDF, just a scrap that I have, and on this sort of back foot that I have on the sled, I'm going to be putting this down on there and then 
butting this end here up against the fence. So I'll be putting the fence to touch the front and then I'll slide this over to touch the fence and then I'll screw it down. So now this is a point of contact and the front is a point of contact and I can run it against the fence to push it straight through and make a straight cut. And, you know, and even if it's, it doesn't track exactly perfect, this is going up against the back wall and I'm actually shaping the part that gets put on there. So I can make some corrections for really, really minor um, deviation from what I want. But the best part is, is because I'm going to be pushing it through at a consistent speed with a fence, I'm going to get a very clean cut. So that's how I'll set up the two points of contact for doing the push. So then I'll be able to just use the fence to scoot it over, get the blade exactly on the line that I want, and push it all the way through and get it nice and clean. Now for the cut that's going to go along the top, that one's a little bit different. We're going to just, we're going to have to set up a different type of fence. That one will be done similarly. Like I can say, it's probably going to be close to an orientation like this. Well, when that happens there, we're going to be putting a piece of MDF also back here where we're just going to stick it on so that it's going to run straight on the fence. And then we're going to push the whole thing through to make that cut along the top. And then for making the other cuts that are going to be to basically cross cut straight across this, uh, it's going to be very similar to the same angle. Okay, so this cut isn't going to happen on its own.